In this video, I will show you how to configure DHCP server in Microtik. One of the important network services is to automatically provide networking parameters such as IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server IPs. This is the work of a DHCP server. And thankfully, of course, Microtik device supports it. There are two methods by which we can configure DHCP server in Microtik. So, first one is by using a DHCP setup wizard, which automatically creates the settings after you run the setup and second is the manual setup wherein you try to configure the important pieces that will make up to your DHCP server. For our demonstration we have a Microtik hex for port number two and three it is on a LAN 1 bridge so ether 2 and ether 3 is LAN 1 and we have LAN 2 bridge which is port number 4 and port number 5 or ether 4 and ether 5 alright without further delay let me show you how to configure your DHCP server network service in Microtik using a DHCP setup wizard. Let's open our Microtik win box. So let's go to neighbors tab. As you can see, we have one Microtik hex RB750GR3 with the identity of RTR01. So let's click on the MAC address and click connect. So let us verify if we have two bridges. So let's go to bridge menu, bridge tab. So we have two bridges, LAN 1 and LAN 2. Let's verify if there are assigned ports to the bridge. So we have Ether 2 and Ether 3 as assigned ports to LAN 1 and Ether 4 and Ether 5 as assigned or member ports to LAN number 2. So bridge is initially configured. Let's verify if we have the IP address set to the bridges or the bridge interface. So we have for LAN number 1, 192.168.100.1 slash 24 and we have for LAN number 2, 192.168.200.1 slash 24. So we have the prerequisites in place. We have a bridge, or we have bridges, and we have IP addresses configured on our bridges. For our first method in configuring the HCP server, service in your Microtik. So we go to IP menu. Next, DHCP server. Under DHCP tab. So we click the DHCP setup. The first step in the DHCP set setup wizard is to select which interface the DHCP server will run. So as we can remember we have two bridges. We have LAN 1 and LAN 2. So for this demonstration we will select LAN 1. Second step is the DHCP address space. So it automatically displays the network address for our LAN 1 bridge interface. 
So if we can remember, the LAN 1 bridge interface IP is 192.168.100.1 slash 24. So the network address for that is the dot zero. Next is the gateway for the DHCP. So this is the default gateway that our clients will receive from the DHCP server. So it doesn't necessarily be the 192.168.100.1. You may have a scenario wherein you have a different default gateway or a router aside from this microtech that will act as the default gateway but for this scenario since the microtech is also our default gateway going to the internet so the IP address 192.168.100.1 will be our correct gateway okay so we don't change anything next addresses to give out these are the range of addresses that the DHCP server will list out to our clients so you can leave the default or you can change the IPs for example I'm changing it from 192.168.100.100 to 192.168.100.200 so I'm effectively uh, making it a lesser range than the default if it's okay so click next DNS servers so you can type your own or preferred DNS servers so in this case I type the Google DNS and you may have another DNS you might also use your local DNS server if it's uh, done so click next least time so this is the amount of time wherein the DHCP client will be holding the IP address so the least time in the format of format of hours minutes and seconds so it's a case-to-case -case scenario uh, you may have a office setup wherein computers are stationary and they work for eight hours a day so you might be using the eight hours list time or perhaps one day okay so or you might this might be a guest network scenario wherein the users will come and go or the devices for this will come and go so you will be only configuring a lower list time so that's up to you so let's say it's one hour so click next so we have completed the DHCP setup let us verify if indeed our DHCP server is running so under the leases tab you will find any DHCP client that has acquired an IP address from the DHCP server so at this moment there are no computers or DHCP clients yet so let me connect one client and see if it gets an IP from the DHCP server so after connecting one client so there appears to be one active client dynamically acquired an IP of 192.168.100.200 if you can remember the range of our IP so the last IP was list out first in the case of Microtik so the status is bound and the, the client will use this IP so in the period of an hour since our least time is one hour so for our second method let's configure the DHCP server manually so for our, if you can remember we go to IP DHCP server 
and we click the DHCP setup. This time, we will click the plus sign to add a new DHCP server. So we will now configure manually the settings here. So for the name, so let's have a descriptive name. So let's say this is LAN2 DHCP. For the interface, we will select the LAN2 bridge interface this time. For this time, so as you can remember, this is the amount of time that the IP address will be list out to the client. So for this demonstration, let's have 8 hours. Next is address pool. So if we go to drop down, we don't have any address pool yet. So that is the next thing that we need to configure for our DHCP server configuration. So for now, we click apply and we click OK. So to configure the IP address pool, we go to IP pool. So the IP pool window opens. As you can see under the pools tab, there are no configured pool. So what we can do is we click the plus sign to add a new pool and add a descriptive name. For example, this is LAN2-pool for addresses. So this is the range of the IP addresses that can be list out to the clients. So we have 192.168. So remember, this is LAN2. So the third octet is 200. So let's start 50 for this demonstration up to 99. So click apply, click OK. Now we have our LAN2 pool configured. So we click close. We go back to our DHCP server setup. So we double click LAN2-DHCP. And under the address pool, we will click on the drop down and select LAN2 pool. Click apply and click OK. Next we will configure the DHCP server networks. So this is the address space if you can remember. So the address will be 192.168.200.0 slash 24. So for our DHCP network on our LAN2, so this is the network address, the gateway. So if this microtik will also act as our gateway, so we have 192.168.200.1. So netmask, you can configure it, but our address carries a slash 24, so perhaps don't need the DNS server, so let's have the same as our first example. We have 8.8.8.8 and we have 9.9.9.9. So as you can see, the DHCP service has so many options or network address parameters that could be leased out to the clients. So it is more than IP address, gateway, and the DNS servers. So for our demonstration, we will limit only for these settings. So we click Apply, we click OK. Let us test if our DHCP server on LAN2 bridge interface is working. So we go to Leases. As you can see, there are no DHCP clients that have acquired an IP from this DHCP server. So let me connect a client and see if it can acquire an IP address. So I've connected a client on LAN2 bridge interface. Let's wait for it to appear here on leases if the client has acquired an IP. And yes, indeed, there is one client which dynamically acquired an IP of 192.168.200.99. If you can remember, it is the range of IP pool for LAN2. So this is under LAN2 DHCP server. 
and the lease expiry is 8 hours and the IP is bounded of course for better testing you might log in or open to the network settings of this device and make sure the other IP parameters has been correctly acquired for example the subnet mask or the net mask the default gateway and the DNS servers so as a summary in this video I have shown you how to configure a DHCP server network service in Microtik there are two methods the quick and easy way is via the DHCP setup wizard and you have the second way which is the manual setup you'll notice that on manual setup you have more settings that you can add in to your DHCP server you can have scenarios wherein you need to put in your NTP server your domain etc so you have more DHCP options so in the future video we might have some advanced DHCP server configuration using other DHCP options so I hope you find this video or configuration guide helpful thank you